Hello, people of YouTube. This is Gray's Guitars. I am Steve Gray. Thank you for watching. Buckle up, because this is going to be a bit of a longer video. So, apparently, uh, Dean Guitars has uh, some more money that they owe, and it might cause them to go out of business permanently. So, if you're a fan of Dean, you... Uh, might want to get a new one if you really want a new one. I mean, used ones are going to be on the market for years, but uh, if you want a brand new one, uh, now may be the time before the old poo hits the fan. So let's take a look here at what GuitarWorld.com is saying about this. The fate of Dean's guitars hangs in the balance of Armadillo, faces demands to surrender all equipment and inventory inside the succession-esque drama determining the future of the U.S. guitar brand. So the last time we knew they had to pay Gibson a little bit of money and stop making a couple of uh, of their guitars, I believe it was a certain V-shape and a, and a uh, certain Z-shape. Um, there was another acoustic that they couldn't make because it was too similar to the Hummingbird. Um, and then that was kind of the last thing we heard, but uh, we got some more news. So we go in depth in the guitar firm's most serious legal wrangle yet, as two separate lawsuits uh, make them liable for $10 million. So... If you're not familiar with this, Armadillo owns Dean. That's really all you need to know about that part of it. So the future of Dean uh, has never been more in question, as a court documents have been filed to reveal that they are being pers pursued for $10 million. Uh, however, they are refuting it in courts, uh, trying to, to see if they get favor. Documents filed by Armadillo lender Valley National Bank should bank is attempting to foreclose on them as demand of the firm turn over its business assets. All complaint documents mentioned are above to view publicly online, apparently. So a tangled web. The story involves a complex network of companies and corporate structures. So basically it's like a company that owns a company that owns a company. They revolve around the Rubinson family, namely Pamela Rubinson, widow of the former Dean CEO. You might be familiar with their names. The pair have already exchanged numerous allegations in court, with the arguments entering the public domain following Evans' termination uh, as Arm Armadillo CEO in 2020. So basically, there were some issues with Evan. Pamela got the company. To explain the extent of the issue, facing Armadillo requires to understand the firms involved in the relationship. Yes, Dean is not a company. We don't need to know that part. Well, Dean is a company, but they're essentially owned by armadillo as i said that part that's all you need to know so the first loan 4.5 million so apparently there's a 289 page complement document that revealed um that there's a line of credit with valley national bank for 4.5 million dollars uh concordia was used as a guinator garnator garnator for the loan meaning that it's own assets, including the Dean brand name and trademark, also became security on the loan. Okay. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. So this is the first time I'm reading this, too. I'm kind of skimming a little bit because a lot of this is fluff. I'm trying to find the meat. The resulting agreement meant that uh, Armadillo stopped repaying the debt, that uh, basically the bank is going to own Dean. So, so soon after uh, they, they foreclosed, uh, they demanded the payment. Um, the documents under under count five, the lender uh, alleges that they are refusing to surrender the assets. And then they, you got a second loan over here for an EPR investment of 6.5. Six point, what is it, 6.2 million dollars? Yep. So Valley National Bank is filing, reveals in June 2020 that the same period extended Armadillo's line of credit. They also granted a mortgage loan of, of $6.2 million to another firm controlled by, by Pamela, so the owner, ERP Investments, LLC. The third company was set up by Elliot Rubinson and Pamela, uh, and is now controlled by Pamela. As of 2004, its purpose has been to act as a separate entity through which to purchase and own property uh, for Armadillo headquarters, warehouses, you know, Factories to make guitars, stuff like that. The most mortgage agreement with the property itself was used as security on the loan. So they're going to lose the property too, potentially, if they're not paying these loans back. So tied together. So why are we talking mortgages? Well, as a result of the 2020 contracts, the producer of Dean Guitar Assets became security on both loans. 
uh, the three firms, the guitar producer, Armadillo, the trademark holder, Concordia, and the property entity, EPR, were tied together not just by Pamela, but by their debt guarantees if one went, others could be at risk. This would not be a problem for Armadillo, provided both it and EPR continued to make the agreed payments. However, according to Valley, as of December, they did not on either loan. So it sounds like they haven't, possibly haven't been paying a loan for a year which is not good. That's how you get stuff taken away from you by not paying your bills. So, they turn in allegedly that the defaults on both loans are manufactured and fictitious. The bank's compliant alleges that the mortgage holders, EPR investors, begin to miss payments on the larger debt from November 10th, 2022. So, Valley has since sold the larger of the two debts to a different company which has begun its own foreclosure proceeding in a separate lawsuit. Yeah, you see that a lot, especially if you're familiar with student loans. Uh, my student loans, the private ones, initially, like, switch hand, like, like, three or four times because companies will sell loans to other companies, and I don't know why, what the point is, but um, I guess they get a little bit of interest back or something at the end of the day. So fighting on all fronts. So, yeah, we're only, like, halfway through this bad boy. So, <laughs> as I said, buckle up. So, uh, they're fighting three lawsuits. Let's keep going. I want to skip through a lot of this. Uh, so, basically saying these lawsuits are frivolous, and representative told Guitar World in a statement supplied from the attorney, there's a reason there has been no progress on the case since Valley National Bank filed suit nearly one year ago. The suit was filed in response to retaliation for us confronting the bank about its highly improper business and banking practices. Okay, so Dean is saying... Or that basically there's some issues with the bank. Uh, let's see. Uh, basically, Evan's saying he thinks they have a bright future. So, um, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to skip a lot of that. I'll be honest. Uh, because if you want to read the full thing, by all means, go go to GuitarWorld.com and check this out. But um, essentially, this sounds like a giant he said, she said type scenario. So regardless, it's probably going to be years before, if, 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 you know, Dean does end up going under or something of the sort, uh, years. This is going to be held up in court for years because this is a it seems like this is a giant he said, she said. So apparently they missed a payment. I don't know how many payments they missed. If it's something where they're continuously missing payments, I can definitely see them going under. If it's something where they like missed one payment or something and the way that the bank designed it made them miss that payment, then I can see that leaning in Dean's favor. But that's, that's kind of what it comes down to is how many of the payments were actually missed, how many... Um, uh, are they continued to, to being missed? Um, are the, is the bank actually getting paid? Can they prove that they're paying the bank? Things along those lines. Because if it's something where they have the ability to prove everything, then there's no reason why they can't be fine. You know, they're gonna, they'll continue paying their loans, whatever, no issues there. But um, it's going to cost them money. Just keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's going to probably may hurt production cost of guitars because it's going to be costing them a lot of money getting lawyers held up in court trying to get all of this sorted and who knows maybe someone will, will buy out dean um at the end of this maybe the bank will sell it off to somebody i could definitely see that happening if they already got all the production equipment uh somebody else will probably swoop them up probably one of the big boys you know gibson or fender uh but that's kind of where we're at so We'll see what happens. That's that's all I have to say. You know, I, I guess this is a little bit shorter of a video than I thought. That this was going to be like a 15er, but uh, we're we're right around nine minutes. So that's where we're going to end it. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think is going to happen to Dean guitars in the future, and uh, let me know your thoughts because I've I've never personally owned a Dean. Played a few of them, but uh, maybe it's time I buy one to see what uh, what all the hype is about. Are they better than other stuff? Are they equally the same as other stuff? I feel like they're comparable to like Schecter. I, I, I want to say they're like on the same level there. Maybe I'm wrong. Schecter, LTD, things along those lines. But uh, other than that, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.